Okay, so Sunday night to Shutubi Shabbat. And we're making whole festivals out of fruits. So one thing to remember is, what's the bracha of fruits about? Um, and another thing to remember is there's a special tefillah to make on to Bishvat for etrogim, that you want to have a nice etrog. And all of our misal should have nice etrogim on the day of to Bishvat to make that tefillah is for the Benish Chai. Excuse me. Should we find a fruit to eat? To say yes. Shekhyanu, to say yes. Yeah. You want to definitely make a fruit to eat Shekhyanu. And also if you can find one of the seven fruits or all of the seven fruits of Eretz Israel, you also want to do that. <clears throat> and there's a big reason for that. My voice is going... Uh... <clears throat> My voice is going... Okay, we'll just keep this short. Sure. The seven fruits of Eretz Yisrael, Shivat Amini. It's the only place in the world where all seven fruits grow in one country. Because each of the seven needs different climates. You can have countries which have two or three or four of the fruits. But to have all seven, it's rare uh, to the fact that it's the bracha of Eretz Yisrael. Um, these seven fruits are not from the just the, the central climate of Eretz Israel, but it comes from the spiritual side of Eretz Israel, which means that is the center of Baha for the world, Eretz Israel. Uh, and everything which has, you know, the higher element of spirituality, it comes out in the physicality. Now, when you're making a Baha on fruit, you as a Jew, as a Neshama, you bring out all the goodness in the fruit. Arizal says that the fruit Ariya uh, Kadosh is according to the concept of Kabbalah. The, uh, the fruit has in its element also a physical side and also a spiritual side that nourishes the neshama. You need to nourish the neshama with the food that you eat. But on the fruit or any food, there also has klipot. Now klipot means peel, but there's also spiritual clipot, which means negative uh, energies on food, all food that you eat. And Reb Chaim Vital writes this in Sefer Sha'a Kedusha, which is brought down the Sefer Kafachayim, in Siman Reish Bet, Sif Aleph, in the opening to Ilkhot Brachot. Why is it so important to be careful about the Brachot that we make? You know, you make sure that your food is kosher. You know, you check your fruit and vegetables, there's no bugs in it. But it's very important to make Brachot. And make brachot and be careful to make the right bracha. And it's very important to make the bracha be kavana. And it says Rabbi Chaim Vital in Shagdusha that if a person is careful in his brachot, he is able to reach a level of Ruach HaKodesh. This is what he says. And he says, Arizal told us to be very careful of the brachot. And the reason is because every Jewish person has an Ishama Chelek Elokam Yimar. You have a pure neshama, which means you are directly connected to Hashem. That you should have that presence of the Shekhinah resting upon you always in having Ruach HaKodesh. What is the problem? That we're eating junk. <laughs> what I mean we're eating junk means we put food into our mouth, but we contaminate our bodies and we become more Megusham. When you make the bracha, you separate the klipot. That means the negative uh, forces or energy which is on the food. And you're left with only the pure uh, uh, spiritual goodness of the fruit. It's the same fruit physically, but it's completely changed in its spiritual elements. When you eat that fruit now, so what goes into your body, it's not clipot. You remain holy. So he told, the Arizal told him, be very careful with the brachot ne'anin and every bracha that you make when you put it into your mouth. Be careful with the kavana and be careful also with the right bracha with the right kavana. Say the bracha b'simcha. You're making a borei priya es, borei priya adama. Properly with kavana, you be able to take off the kilipot and nourish your neshama to reach the point of ruach hakodesh. So that's the opening for the brachot. You're gonna we're gonna make two bishvat to get the family round to bring down all the fruits that we can bring. It's important to make uh, fifteen fruits is the minhag. Like two bishvat. Is 15th of two bishvat is the 15 fruits. And we in our we home, we take also have the minak to say the 15 shira malot on all the fruits. Shira malot, we say 15, 15 
different shira malot and 15 different fruits. The order of making the fruits of brachot is bodan or kapachai magaish. Magaish means first you make the bracha of mezonot. That's mem. Mem gimel ayin is maga. Esh alef shin. First is mezonot and then hagefen. Hagefen means wine or grape juice. So it's not all but about that's, that's according to Shulchan Aruch? No. So Shulchan Aruch is not clear. There's two different opinions on Shulchan Aruch. Kafa Chaim is the first one to bring down, down this rule of Magaesh, which also fits into Shulchan Aruch, and it's just an easy way of remembering it. Uh, Shulchan Aruch has different opinions. According to one opinion, you make a bracha of Chaviv. According to different opinion, you make a bracha of Etz Kodem, Adama. So if you have a nice Etz, then you which can is, both yeah, in line with both yes. yeah. yeah. So... So on Tu Bishvat, you want to be making all of the brachot, including mezanot. So you should start off with the mezanot. You get wheat, chita, sa'ura. <laughs> Next one, you want to make a geffen on, on grape juice or wine. Then, ha'etz. Ha'etz specifically should do b- b- shivat aminim. And according to the shivat aminim, according to the pasuk. <laughs> um, so which means... Zayt would come first, olive, and then uh, correspondingly will be tamar, and then will be the the grape and the eretz chitav sarah gef and teina or rimon. Teina will be the fig, and then rimon will be the end. Uh, I want to say one thing about teini. Teini more figs, so it's very rare to get um, good figs, and it's very rare. Usually they come dry figs or fresh figs. Both dry and fresh figs, right, should be tested and opened and seen and checked thoroughly. Okay, now I'm going to say, yeah, for bugs. Now I'm going to tell you my personal experience. Okay, I've never opened a fig and not found a bug. And I don't eat, but I don't eat the figs. Yeah, never. Fresh ones, and I'm like, I'd opened enough of them until I gave up trying to find one without bugs in it. Um... Mm. And I know somebody that this is a I'm thinking a personal story. He was at his father in law's house and he said, How can you eat the figs? They're full of bugs. He says, What are you talking about? Rubbish is not. And he's like, he was about to take a fig and put it into his mouth. And he said, Okay, let me just try. He takes a fig out of his hand and he opens out the fig on a on a white plate. And he and he opens it all out with a spoon. He like spreads out the whole fig onto the plate. And then he shows him on the plate. And he points, he says, can you see one, two, three, four? Oh, he sees all the bugs. He said, that was about to go in your mouth. He said, eating bugs, eating bugs. So I'm not saying you can't find, maybe you can find, okay? But if you dare, you have to open it to that degree. That so you open it out and you see well. all it's clean. Sorry? Strawberries, I believe as well. So not... strawberries is less than, uh, less than this, okay? I do eat strawberries, yeah, but they have to be checked. Yeah, you have to be checked. There's two parts. You have to... Listen, strawberries, <laughs> it's work to cut off, right? We eat them only on Tobi Shabbat, and uh, it's work. You, know, you have to spend a few minutes cl- cleaning them and cutting them. So, yeah, if you imagine a strawberry, you have to cut off the whole head and the tail. The, just the tips, because the tips is a concentration of bugs. You have to cut the... Cut, um, Can the... I mute, please? Okay. Thanks. Thank you, um to scrape off the the outer edge of the of the or brush it or brush it or the outer edge or scrape it off you can brush it then it need to be cut in half and and soaked in water with some kind of soap and then washed so it's a process it takes a couple of minutes but then you can enjoy your strawberries without bugs now, mm-hmm. having said that okay having said that i'm going to share my other experience um, and this is with my own eyes. I saw this. Okay, you want to maybe want to try it? I couldn't believe it. I'm thinking I was shocked. I was, this is not something I read in the book. I saw this in my own eyes. We took a strawberry. We cut it. We cut it in half. We put it in the microwave for ten seconds. It became a little bit uncomfortable for heat, and we saw like a white, just bug just crawling out, and it just looked like a a thin thread, white thread, had no legs. <laughs> No eyes, just like like a little worm, like a little white worm, and it's like the same. It looked like you know that in the strawberry when you cut it in half, it's like little white streaks. It's exactly the same color, but it was a white worm. They're like they put me off eating like strawberries for for a while. So these things you gotta really check. 
really check. You know, if you really love strawberries, then you'll do it. If you don't love them that much, then it's, yeah. not, it's not worth <laughs> the, yeah. the effort. If you love it, enjoy it. Enjoy isn't it. There, just make sure you can clean. Yeah. Go on, isn't, there, isn't there a halakha? And I know a, a small worm like that you can see. Small bugs you can see. Yes. If, it, if, you, if, you, see if you can't see it, yeah. If it's too small for the eye to see, you can eat it. But small, not too small for the eye to see. It's not if you don't look for it. If you look for it, it means if you can see it. Now, if there's a dot that you can see with your eye, and in the microscope you see that the dot is not in the sure. dot, it's a bug, that means you can see it, right? Yeah, like it's got to be something like that. <laughs> okay, well, we'll just end here. Is there any questions? No, so I'm going to wish you all a good night. Thank you all for joining me. And we're going to wish you all a happy to be shvat. So, Motei Shabbat is Rabbi Yitzchak Abu Chatzir. I love for all. Aufa Ishkon Rabbi Yitzchak. Everyone light candle, do it fila, drink some arak. Big school out. Sorry? Danko. It's Danko. What's the Danko? It's the Danko of Rabbi Sali, Rabbi Yitzchak. Yeah, Rabbi Yitzchak. There's two There's two Rabbi Yitzchak. Rabbi Yitzchak was his brother and his uncle. His uncle was a teacher in Kabbalah. Rabbi Yitzchak Abu Chatzir. He's uh, his uncle, the son of Rabbi Yaakov Abu Chatzir. Yeah, great miracle. So, okay, I wish you all a uh, Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for joining Thank me. We'll see you back next week. Thank you. Good night, Mao.